Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for this blessed opportunity to come together in your presence, to worship you, to honor you, to hear your word, to be taught, to be inspired, to be guided with your wisdom. Breathe upon us now. We welcome your presence. We welcome the Holy Ghost. And now our hearts and our minds are open to hear from you. And we receive the word with faith and meekness and gladness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We've got two great nights. Tonight, which is an all night meeting, and then tomorrow night, which will not be all night, but uh, a few hours in the night from about uh, 6 p.m. or so till about 9 p.m. But these are great meetings. And uh, I've got a few things to talk to you about. Our nation is very important to every one of us. Of course, we may have not acted as though it is important to us. But we need to realize that your nation is important to you. The famous words of J.F. Kennedy of the United States of America many many years ago he said think not what your country can do for you think what you can do for your country how important those words still are today for every nation in our meeting tonight is in pursuance of that cause. Part of our contribution to the future and destiny of our nation. We must be willing to look at certain things, certain vital areas and elements for rebuilding. And building afresh real nationhood. And I'll be looking at some vital elements. Praise the Lord. We have to review. A new kind of leadership. It is said that Nigeria is rich in natural resources. But the truth is, the development of economic and technological leadership far outweigh the development of natural resources. No matter how rich a nation may be in natural resources, if there's no leadership development, that nation will be poor. Our educational system is part of what we will look at during our conference and in some of the things we're going to be talking about. We need to redefine our educational system. 
and the course curriculum that should be addressed to fit the needs of our nation. We we'll also look at the the problem of greed in our country and choose the right way forward to make such changes that will help us rebuild confidence in our errors and in our future. And a very vital element for success is honoring our parents. There is a blessing to those who honor their parents and there is a curse for those who don't. And that is important for us to recognize. Why we remain grateful to those who taught or who fought for the survival of our polity. We all must be willing to participate in our fledgling democracy and save our nation from the barrage of stubborn plutocratic oligarchy perpetuated by men of yesterday. To do this we must remember the following. Number one, your capital is your mind. The most important capital that you require is not money. Therefore, your dream in life should not be where to get money or how to get money. The first and vital, most vital element is your mind. What to do with your mind. And that's why this conference is very important because I'm helping you, giving you materials to think upon, to engage your mind. Because your mind is very important. It's your mind that determines whether you'd be a success in life or whether you'd be a failure. Your success, your prosperity, your greatness is not determined by your geographical location. It is not determined by the nation where you live or the economy in which you function, even though they are very vital elements. Your mind is what determines what you become because with your mind you can change everything else you can change the state of your nation you can change the economy in which you live or function you can change anything if only you have the right thoughts in your mind secondly you have to realize that ideas are more valuable than money. Money is a slave of ideas. If you nurse your ideas long enough and discipline yourself in the direction of your ideas, money cannot be prevented from coming to you. Polish your ideas. Refine your ideas. And get ready for a great future. We must dream for and build a new and vibrant and successful nation. Remember that that is imperative to our collective destiny of greatness. The Bible tells us that when a leper is healed or cleansed, he should wash his body, wash his clothes, wash everything in his house. Otherwise, he'll be reinfected by his environment. Now, if we understand that, we should realize 
that no matter what we do to ourselves to improve ourselves as individuals our nation is our environment as it were we must turn our attention to our nation and be willing to effect changes in this environment of a nation that means that every one of us must become involved in the development of our fledgling democracy in recent times we all are aware that the head of state the president of the federal republic of nigeria president olusegun obasanjo has started a fight against corruption a war against corruption we should hail the efforts but it's important for every one of us to realize that corruption is not merely the problem of the culprits but the degradation and denigration of our society as a people the fight against corruption is not the witch haunting of political enemies but the massive struggle against the satanic tyranny that seeks to mesmerize our dream of decency, dignity, and distinction in celebrating the joy of labor and achievement. We say thank you to the president for his fight. But we can only hope and pray that it will not degenerate to the long arm of dictatorship and intimidation that has plagued Africa for so long. Nor should it result to the obnoxious abuse of human rights as some quarters are already reporting. We need dreamers for tomorrow. We need dreamers in the field of medicine our hospitals are full of hopeless sick people hopeless in the sense that there's no medicare there's nothing with which to help them but if we cry to the government we should realize by now that not much may be done but we have to look at the future and remember that every one of us has a purpose for living and we must be willing to toe that line of success and greatness and read our suffering masses from those that will destroy them through ignorance and lack of willpower to save dying humanity in our hospitals that have become a storehouse for the sick recently there was a, a documentary on the BBC and uh, it had to do with drugs in Nigeria fake drugs that are being brought into this country and distributed all around our country particularly imported from India it's a pity that not so much has been done to wage war against such actions by a few individuals you know nobody can import something into Nigeria without the help of Nigerians but Nigerians have helped the Indians to import fake drugs and filled our chemists and hospitals with the wrong drugs I wish that that uh, BBC telecast was run around our country for everybody to see so you can understand exactly what we're talking about 
But rather than pursue and try to fight them, which may not work, I call upon you to be ready to produce genuine drugs. Be ready. Invent new drugs. And let us export them to India and to the rest of the world. There are some of us who are willing to support and sponsor research in education and Medicare. I am very willing and ready and I've started out already.